Hey, Phil Steele here. I just wanted to make a quick little video for you showing you how I edited this photo that I took at my house the other day and demonstrating a few things for you about using Lightroom presets in your editing process. So here's what we'll cover in this video. I'll show you how I edited this photo in Lightroom from beginning to end, going from this original to this end result, or alternately this end result if you like that look better. I'll tell you why I first tried to take this shot with my iPhone but then gave up and got my DSLR. I'll explain why I decided to use a Lightroom preset in addition to the editing I did by hand on this photo. We'll talk about the new preset amount slider that was added to Lightroom recently and why it's so important. And I'll show you my favorite Lightroom presets in case you want to get those yourself. And by the way, if you don't yet have my full course, Lightroom Made Easy, you can get it from the link below this video. This is a complete course containing 35 videos, more than seven hours of instruction, and it takes you all the way through from the basics of Lightroom to the most advanced topics. It's the only Lightroom course you'll need, and it's my most popular training course by far. All right, I woke up the other day to see this view outside my window. One of the great things about living in the mountains of North Carolina is waking up to days like this. Now, since I had my iPhone in my pocket and I was feeling lazy, the first thing I did was try to capture the photo on my iPhone. And here's the result. It's not bad, but when you crop in on it, you can look at the level of detail that you're getting there and compare it to the original of the shot with the DSLR, the same part of the photo, and you can see there's just a world of difference. Here's, here's the iPhone level of detail and graininess. Here's the DSLR level of detail. And you can see on the iPhone, the resolution just isn't there. And shooting it with my DSLR, it's not even a new high resolution one. This is a fairly old Canon 5D Mark III, but there's just so much more detail there when you zoom in. All right, now let's see how we go from this original to something more like this. Now to start out, the first thing I want to do is crop this in a little bit. There's too much of these trees down here at the bottom. I want to get into this interesting stuff in the middle ground here. So I'm going to pick the crop tool and I'm just going to bring it in to more like the zone that I want. I don't want to come in too far on this side because I want that hill, that island. I want to take a little of the sky out because it's not all that interesting all the way up there. Bring in this part. Just trying to get into the more interesting stuff. And you know, it looks to me like it's slightly going downhill to the right, so I'm going to rotate up to try to make it look a little more level. All right, so there's basically the frame that I want. Now, on some photos, I would just start making the adjustments now. You know, I would maybe start adjusting the blacks, you know, to bring up the contrast, or I'd be pushing up the clarity, tighten that mid-tone contrast. But before I do anything on this particular photo, because I know I want to convert this into some kind of black and white, it'll work better if I do the color treatment first before I start making all these adjustments. And then I won't have to redo them to suit that particular color treatment. Now, the easy quick thing to do is go black and white right here. And that looks great and I can start there. But I'm actually finding traditional black and white a little boring compared to some of the other options that are around for black and white styles. In particular, lately, I like to do what's called duotones. So I'm going to switch it back to its color. I'm going to go over to the presets panel. And here in the presets, you can see I have a whole bunch of them that begin with contrastly, contrastly, contrastly. That is my favorite set of presets. It's a huge set called the Contrastly Complete Preset Bundle. And it's got 1,400 presets in it grouped into little categories, as you can see here. I love it. I'll put a link down below to it where you can get it. And you can usually even get a special price by using my link, a special discount for my subscribers. Look down below the video for that. You'll see a category here called Contrast Lead Duotones. I'm going to open that up. And duotones are basically black and white, but with a color tint to them. And so you can see these look cool. And as I scroll over them, you can see the effect appearing in there. And I think something bluish because this is kind of a wintry looking scene to me, but not that blue. I think I like the cyan better than the blue. Cyan high contrast. I kind of like this one, cyan low. And we'll use that as our starting point. So I'm going to select that one. So now with that color treatment applied, I can start making my detailed adjustments. So the first thing I might try on something like this is pulling down the blacks to heighten the contrast between this black and white stuff. 
But you can see what starts happening because it's so dark down here at the bottom. I don't want to crush these blacks that far to try to get something on these hills. So I'm going to go back to neutral on those blacks. And what I'm instead going to do is we're going to make a gradient coming from the top. So let me go to the masking panel here. I'm going to select a linear gradient, draw a gradient down from the top. So you can see it's going to be intensely affecting the top of the photo and barely or not at all affecting the bottom of the photo in a gradient style. So now I'm going to pull the blacks. And you can see it's bringing out the contrast. These hills are getting darker. These hills are really popping out. But it's not messing up and crushing the blacks down here at the bottom. Now maybe I went a little, a little far there. Maybe these are a little too dark. Backed it off a little. So that's looking much better to me. Now I also want to do clarity, which just punches up the mid-tone contrast, makes things look sharper. Right now I'm still working with the gradient on. And I'm pushing up the clarity, and it's only affecting it from the top down. It's not really affecting it at the bottom. So I'm going to push that way up also, just making that punchier and punchier. And it's funny, I just noticed a little detail. Look right in here. See this little church steeple? I never noticed that before. So now I did all those adjustments with that top-down gradient, so it wasn't affecting the bottom. So I'm going to close the panel, close the masking panel, so I'm back to the main editing panel affecting the whole photo. Now I'm going to push up clarity just a little bit more to affect these trees down here that didn't get affected before. But you can see, I don't want to, look how, if I push clarity up too much, see how these trees get horribly crunchy down here? That's what I was avoiding by doing those adjustments with the gradient. So I'm just going to give them a tiny touch of it down here. So I'm liking the look of that. And then as a finishing touch, I like to come down to the effects panel, do the uh, vignette, and I'll put a dark vignette on the corners. You can see if I go if I go way down, you can see what it's doing to the corners there. So I'll go back to a more reasonable reasonable amount. Just gives a little gives a little framing effect to it. Let me go full screen. Yeah, I like the look of that. So there's my there's my before photo. There's my after photo with that contrastly preset and then a little bit of manual adjustment. And then a few minutes later, the cloud shifted and it opened up this little meadow right here. And I loved the way this looked. It's like this wall of trees is holding back the fog and exposing this meadow. So let me show you how I edited this one from this starting point to this final photo. And I'll use a couple of different techniques just to show you a few more things. So first of all, I want to crop in, of course. So I open the crop tool, bring it into the part of the photo that I want to focus on here. Take some of that sky out, which is mostly pretty boring up there. And you can see I've got the, the part of interest kind of on this third line here, following the rule of thirds a bit. Okay, so there's what I want. Now, once again, as with the previous one, before I start making adjustments, I'm going to put the color treatment on here that I want so I don't have to do those adjustments twice to dial it in for that color treatment. So this time, instead of choosing that cyan bluish tone, I'm going to pick a different kind of duo tone here. And I think I kind of like this yellowish look, almost like a sepia. I think I'm going to pick this one called Duo Tone Yellow Shadow Boost, once again from that contrastly set. I'm going to apply that one. Now, unlike the previous time where I just applied it and then started adjusting, this time I'm going to adjust the preset itself because now we have this preset amount slider, which they added to Lightroom in version 11, something we literally were begging for for a decade. It's finally here. So now when you apply a preset, you can change the amount that it affects the photo. If I push it up, you can see how yellow it becomes. If I push it down, it goes into this darker brownish kind of tones. So I think I'm going to go slightly above the midpoint into the yellowish colors here. And that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to start making my adjustments. So over here in the basic panel, I'm going to I'm going to test pulling the blacks down. You can see that preset actually made some changes. You can see it pushed the blacks up, the shadows up. I'm going to try darkening the blacks a little. But what I see happening once again is it's darkening the blacks on these foreground objects, making them the focus. And I really don't want that to happen. So I'm going to do 
to start out what I did on the previous one by making a linear gradient. Opening the masking panel, linear gradient, down from the top. I don't want it affecting these trees in the foreground. Now I'm going to darken the blacks to make those hills in the background and these hills in the midground really pop out. And while I'm in here, I'm going to increase the clarity on all that, just making the clarity as mid-tone contrast, and I may even push the contrast itself up. Might have gone a little too far with the blacks. Now, I like how this is looking, but I still want to put some more focus on this meadow. So what I'm going to do is create another mask, and this time I'm going to use a radial gradient just focused on this area. So I'm going to create a new mask, pick a radial gradient, I'm going to sort of draw it in here with my cursor. It didn't come out exactly where I wanted it, but I can move it. Just dragging it with the mouse to put it where I want it. And it might be a little larger than I want, so I'm going to shrink in the sides of it a bit here. Kind of get it focused just on that part of the photo that I want it to be focused on. Okay, now that I've got this radial gradient, I'm going to do the blacks and the clarity and the contrast even more to really make this meadow pop out. Clarity. I'm going to go too far because this is it's going to look pretty grainy. Although a photo like this can stand a little grain. Push up the contrast a bit in there. So now I'm really getting these, these sun streaks where the sun shining through the trees starts to show up here. I'm going to toggle H to hide those pins. I'm going to come up on the blacks a little because I got a little carried away maybe in that zone. Bring back my gradient. I'm going to move my gradient slightly to the left here because it's affecting these uh, affecting these trees over here a little more than I would like. Hide those pins again by toggling H. So that's looking pretty good. I like the way this extra contrast in here has brought out the dynamic look of this light and shadow. I'm going to close that masking panel. And once again, as a finishing step, I'm going to come down to the effects panel and put a little vignette on the corners, give it a little bit of a framing effect. So there's my before photo. There's my after photo using some manual adjustments and a preset. And once again, the Lightroom presets that I use 99% of the time, my favorite collection by far, is the Complete Lightroom Preset Bundle by Contrastly. I've got a link down below this video where you can get the special price for my subscribers. This is a huge bundle, over 1,400 presets, all organized into useful categories, and I think every Lightroom user should have it. And by the way, if you don't yet have my full course, Lightroom Made Easy, you can get it from the link below this video. This is a complete course containing 35 videos, more than 7 hours of instruction, and it takes you all the way through from the basics of Lightroom to the most advanced topics. It's the only Lightroom course you'll need, and it's my most popular training course by far. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.